We sure, there we go. Good morning. I was about to sing you a song, but I'll pass. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. What a nice day it is. And our, everybody that's watching online, you can, we would like for you to give us a like. And you have a special opportunity, those who are online. You can actually comment about anything about the service, even the sermon. You all here, you have to wait till you get home to do that, I guess. We're all glad you're here. We have a couple of announcements. You're first. Good morning. This is just a reminder to the men of the church, and I guess to the women of the church who'd like to get rid of their men on Saturday night, but um, uh, the men are going to have a, a, a game night Saturday night here at the church. Uh, we got some cornhole planned. We got some ping pong. We're going to have a putting green. We're, of course, we're going to eat because we met and we ate. And if you didn't, if we hadn't ate, why would we met? But um, but we're going to have hot dogs and popcorn and uh, drinks, and um, it's just a time of fellowship for the men of the church. And you know, if some of you men have some friends you want to invite to come with you, uh, please feel free to do that. Uh, but we're just really looking forward to it, and um, hope hope if you're available on fr on Saturday night at five o'clock, just meet here at the church. It's going to go five o'clock until. Um, but uh, we'll make sure everyone gets home safely. Um. Anyway, please join us. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me all right? <clears throat> Next Sunday, we're going to have a VBS meeting at 1015 here in the sanctuary. I'd like for anybody that's willing to volunteer your time to come out. We're going to be covering some of the curriculum. Hopefully, go ahead and nail down some dates for everyone for this summer for the kids. <clears throat> I'm excited to be working with everyone going forward. We're going to be using the scuba theme this summer to where the kids can dive into a friendship with God. And Howard has a video for you guys here to hopefully engage the children on this one. Thank you. Ooh, it's another hot one out there. Tim's reaching over 100 degrees today. Hope you're keeping cool. Another hot one out there. Temps reaching over 100 degrees today. Hope you're keeping cool and having fun on this hot summer day. Now, let's get back.
And guess what? Oh, oh. We all stand and sing number 362, Nothing But the Blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me bright as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me bright as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me bright as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You maybe have a seat and I'll ask the children if they want to come forward for the children's moment. All right. Y'all sit right there. Sit right there. I'm going to show you something really cool and I want you to watch carefully.
okay? very carefully. Yeah, we won't use that one. Okay. You ready? You ready? No. How, how many are how many are in this tower? You got to be a good witness. You got to watch. 10 10 of the cubs. That's wonderful. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh man. All right, well there were 10. Okay. Um I tell you what. Tell me uh, I need one of you to be a witness and tell me what just happened. Who wants to do that? You can speak in the microphone. Brayden, tell me what just happened. It fell. Uh, it fell. That's about all there is to say, right? Do you have any more details? Uh, you knocked it over with your legs. I did. I did. I, I built a tower and I knocked it over and it fell. I knocked it over with my legs. That, that, very good witnessing. What is a witness? What is a witness? Somebody that watched something happen, and then um, usually they, they share that, right? If you're witnessing, you see it, and then you tell somebody, right? Well, guess what? We are all called to be witnesses of the good news of Easter. Were you guys here Easter? I think most of you were. Were you here on Easter morning? What were we celebrating? The resurrection of... Jesus, yay! And so we were talking about that, and we worshiped Jesus, and we read the scriptures, and we experienced that. We witnessed, I mean, we didn't actually witness him rise, but we, we are witnesses to that good news, okay? And so we have seen it, we understand it, we've heard about it, read about it, worshiped him, we've experienced Jesus, and then what do we have to do to be a good witness? We have to tell people about it. Very good, very good. All right, I need some helpers. We're going to have a word of prayer, and then I need your help with the change offering, okay? All right, let's pray. Dear God, we do thank you for sending Jesus. That is the best news, that he came to save us from our sins, that he, um, Lord, we were sad when he died on the cross, but we were overjoyed when we celebrated his resurrection. And that is really good news, that we serve a risen Savior. It is good news, and we want to tell others about him. Thank you. Amen. Oh, that's a hand, little transformers. Here, just take one of these I knocked over. Help me. All right. With some change. Here we go. Thanks. Thanks. Just collect some change. Do you remember? Yeah, Mom will help you. Thanks, Sam.
As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to thank you for uh, praying for my sister. And um, I will be out of town next week. I'm going to go down to Alabama and help her a little bit with her knee rehab. She had full knee replacement, and she's doing great. So thank you so much for your prayers. Um, continue to pray for her. Um, if you do not receive our weekly prayer and news, it's just a weekly email that goes out, um, and you would like to, uh, just communicate to us your email address, and we'll be happy to send that to you. It kind of tells you what's going on. Um, we have a short prayer list, what's coming up the next Sunday, and the other things that are on our calendar. So um, whether you're watching us online or you're sitting here, if you'd like to receive that, just communicate to us your email if you don't have an email address, we send a few of them out through the regular mail. That's fine. Just communicate to us your physical address, and we'll mail it to you. But um, we like to keep people apprised. We're always up to something. Woo! And uh, we just want you to know what we're up to. So, um, And then we, we do appreciate your prayers for each other. Let's come before the Lord now in prayer. And uh, it is a beautiful day. I ask you to pray for our confirmands, our mentors. Um, we have a rock climbing trip today. We're excited about that. Um, we got VBS plans. We're excited about that. You're hearing from the bell choir. You just heard from them. You're going to hear from our regular choir. We're excited about our music programs. Um, I had a meeting yesterday with a couple of teachers for our children's Sunday school classes. We're planning that for the summer. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff going on, and it's exciting. It is good to be about the Lord's business. Amen? All right. So talk to Jesus. And then I'll lead us in a, a corporate prayer in a few moments. Thank you, Lord. What a beautiful day. There's a beautiful scripture, Lord, that says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Um, Lord, we thank you for the scriptures. Uh, I thank you that that particular scripture has always resonated with me, Lord. Uh, I have always been glad to, to come to your church, any church, and, and just be in worship and sing hymns of praise and, and hear your word proclaimed and meet with my friends. But Lord, I know that that's not always the case. For, for some folks, they have not felt welcome at a church or they um, had a bad experience at a church or they felt like they didn't fit in. Lord, I'm, I'm so sad for that. I know that you are because your call to us is to be a place of welcome, a, a place where anybody can fit in. Everybody is welcome. And everybody can find a, a niche or a place to, to serve and to grow in their faith. They can find a Bible study class or a Sunday school class or a small group to be a part of um, or a men's group or a women's group. I mean, they can find a place where they can connect with others, but also connect with you. That's what church is about. It's about connecting with you. And so, God, I just pray that that you can strengthen us in our ministries as we reach out to this community, as we reach out to our neighbors, as we reach out to friends. Just, Lord, I was reading this morning in Galatians. It says all that counts is faith working itself out in love. That's all that really counts. Just faith, living that out in the world, expressing it through love for you and love for others. Make us that kind of a church, Lord. Grow us into that kind of a church where all are welcome, where all find a place, where all find you. That's our prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, would the ushers wait upon us for the morning offerings? Again, we appreciate your generosity to the ministries of the church. Um, we purchased uh, about $150 worth of children's curriculum yesterday. So that's one of the many things that your contributions go toward. Um, so thank you for that. We've also purchased uh, some of the Vacation Bible School materials. So thank you for your generosity. Let's have a prayer. Lord, again, we uh, offer our gifts, your tithes, and we just ask you to, to do your thing with them, Lord. Multiply them and use them in this world that your name may be glorified and that people may be drawn to you, Lord. As we witness, as we reach out, um, as we share the good news, just um, we, do that, we do that so that people can find you, Lord. Um, that's our prayer. So bless our, bless our offering this morning toward that end. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
So the moral of that story is always obey the Spirit, right? right. That's good. That's good. Do whatever the Spirit of Jesus tells you to do. Our next hymn is uh, 643. Would you stand as you're able while we sing When Love is Found? Thank you, Sonny. Pray with me uh, for a moment for this uh, prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, we pray that you would open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit so that as scripture is read and your word is preached, we may hear what you have to say to us today. Amen. Have you ever been called as a witness in a, a court trial or maybe to, to give a statement to police after an accident? Um, it, it can be a very nervous experience, uh, even if you are accustomed to public speaking. Um, you're in unfamiliar territory. You're feeling kind of 
nervous and you're not sure how your words are going to be received or what the reaction will be. And you want to do a good job and you want to tell the truth and the whole truth. And it's just, it's kind of tough sometimes to, to be a good witness. Now, some things we like witnessing to. Um, what are some examples? Just anybody, what can you call out? What, what are some things that we like to tell others about? We like witnessing to what? Beautiful day. A beautiful day. We like that. Oh, what a day the Lord has made. What else do we like to witness about? Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Oh, yes. Yes. Let me tell you. Okay, no. We love to witness about our family, our kids, our grandkids. They do something great. They do something funny. What else do we like to witness about? Gossip. Gossip. What? A good movie. We'll tell somebody else about it, right? You got to see this. It was great. One of you shared with me not long ago about a beautiful song. That, that you had listened to, a, a nice Easter version of Hallelujah. And, and we like when we find something or witness something that's very exciting to us, that's cool, then we're, we're excited to share it, aren't we? Some things we like witnessing to. Some things are kind of hard for us to witness about. Which category do you think does witnessing about Jesus fall into? for you? Is that something that's easy to do, that you're joyful to do, that you look for opportunities to do, or is it something that's a little bit challenging for you, a little bit difficult? <laughs> During these lovely Sundays of Eastertide, we keep looking at different aspects of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what it means for us, and we listen to what Jesus said to others, and we ponder what his words to them might mean for us. And we think about that. Uh, it's good for us. It's, it's kind of like listening in as the teacher goes over the material with the students, you know. And we get to listen in and we can hear the examples. We get to listen and watch and benefit from their experiences. Today, we're listening in as the resurrected Jesus meets with his disciples. Um, this time, we are reading in the Gospel of Luke. And the scripture we're looking at occurs on that first Easter evening, okay? <clears throat> now, um, we're going to be in Luke chapter 24, um, and you'll, you'll remember, of course, we just celebrated this on Easter, but earlier that morning, some of the women had gone to the tomb. They were going to anoint Jesus' dead body with spices and oil, and when they got there, they found the tomb rolled away, and there was no body. And they were surprised by that. And then suddenly a couple of angels were standing right next to them. And I love the way Luke um, writes about this. He says, the angel said, why do you look for the living among the dead? Right? I just, I love that. I have always loved that. Why do you look for the living around uh, among the dead? Um, he's not here. Jesus is risen, as he said. Don't you remember what he told you back in Galilee? And then the angels kind of take the women back, remind them of Jesus' words. He said that he would be betrayed, he would be crucified, and the third day he would arise. Is any of this ringing a bell for you ladies? You know, the angels are, are telling them and reminding them of what Jesus has said. And they were frightened, understandably so. And, and they ran to tell the disciples about it, and the disciples didn't believe them, understandably so. In the midst of their sadness and despair over Jesus' death, there was a lot of confusion that day, right? The, the rumors were flying, strange reports were coming in, and they didn't know what to believe or what had happened. But still, there was this kind of a mental fog clouding most of the minds, uh, clouding the minds of most of the disciples. They just... You know, they just weren't making sense of anything that was coming at them. Even what they had seen with their own eyes, the empty tomb and the pieces of Jesus' clothing. They're just the reports. They're not getting it. By late afternoon, two of the dejected disciples were traveling to Emmaus for the night. They were taking a 10-mile, seven to 10-mile hike. It depends on exactly where Emmaus was. Scholars aren't sure. But it was seven to 10 miles away. And so they're walking back there. They're very sad, okay? As they walked along, suddenly they were joined by another traveler, and they didn't recognize this other traveler, okay? Um, the three 
of them had a nice chat about all things religious. <laughs> they talked about prophets. They talked about priests and miracles, the festival of Passover and the chaos that had occurred with the crucifixion of Jesus. They talked about the death of their friend Jesus, whom they had hoped was the Messiah. But what good is a dead Messiah, right? And so these two dejected disciples are telling all this to the stranger. And they told the stranger about the morning's incredible report about the women finding the tomb and it was open and the body was gone and they saw a couple of angels and then some of the men folk ran to the tomb and they didn't see any angels, but the women were right. There was no body. They didn't know what to make of it. And then the stranger, did I mention that he was Jesus? <laughs> and then the stranger said to them, I love this, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Now, I don't know what reaction these two expected, but I bet it wasn't that, you know. And then the stranger goes on. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? That's kind of what the angels were telling the women, right? Don't you remember? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I love this. Jesus... He just takes them back to school. <laughs> you know, let's, let's go over this again, okay? Back in the law of Moses, you remember all this stuff. Well, the two dejected disciples, they listen politely as they walk through the scriptures, but they still don't realize that this is Jesus, okay? They're just having a nice religious discussion with this guy. When they arrive in Emmaus, Jesus acts as if he's going on, and the two disciples invite him to stay the night with them. Oh, you, you know, it's getting late. You don't want to leave yet. Just stay the night with us and you can get up fresh in the morning. As they sat down to eat, Jesus takes the bread. He blesses it. And then Jesus broke the bread and he gave each of them a piece to eat. And I don't know if it was that action. I don't know. I don't know if it was that visual cue. I don't know if it was the breaking of the bread. I don't know what if, if it was the prayer. I don't know if Jesus was just ready to reveal himself. Okay, but as he handed the bread to them, Jesus, their eyes are opened and they recognize him and then he's gone. Oh, man, did you see, did you, that was Jesus. That was Jesus. Where did he go? Oh, awesome. They are so excited. They are so excited that they immediately, you know, I, I imagine them grabbing some bread off the table and heading out the door and they are going back to Jerusalem 10 more mile hike in the evening because they got to tell the others, right? They go back to the disciples. That's what we do. When you've witnessed something incredible, you tell others about it, right? You can't wait to share the good news or the joy of the birth or the amazing miracle or the healing or whatever it was. You, when something awesome happens, you just can't wait to witness about it. So here's our main scripture, bless you, for today, and it's still Easter evening. It's the 24th chapter, and we're picking up at verse 35. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how, to see, so they got back there, okay? And they're talking to the, the other disciples. And, and they tell their story of how Jesus has appeared to them, had appeared to them as they were walking along the road, and how they recognized him as he was breaking the bread. It was awesome, and he got to that point, and he prayed, and he broke the bread, and, and then it was Jesus, and we knew it. And just as they were telling about it, who appears? Jesus. Jesus himself is suddenly standing right there among them. And what are his first words to his disciples after his resurrection? Peace be with you. Oh. Huh. Those are some great first words. I imagine they needed a little bit of that divine peace, don't you think? It's been a rough three days, right? Peace, peace be with you. Maybe they felt badly about their desertion of Jesus. Um, Peter was the one that denied him, but you know what? They all ran away with the exception of John. None of them stood at the foot of the cross with the women as Jesus died except John. The rest of them were nowhere to be seen. Maybe they watched from a distance. Maybe they just ran away. But in Jesus' darkest moment, 
in this life. They weren't around. Maybe they were worried Jesus would be upset with them, you know? And so his first words to them are, peace, be with you. It's all right, guys. I'm not upset. I'm not angry. You haven't disappointed me. Peace, be with you. Isn't Jesus amazingly gracious? Isn't he forgiving? I mean, not only our sins... Um, I don't know that it was a sin for them to abandon him, but it sure was wimpy, right? And Jesus forgives that. Peace be with you. I'm so glad to see you guys. What an amazing Lord we serve. I imagine there was a, enough guilt and grief to, to go around, and they all needed a little bit of that peace. And the resurrected Jesus brought it, right? He brought the peace. Jesus is so good to us. You and I need a little divine peace from time to time, don't we? We struggle with things. Maybe it's been a rough three days for us, or a rough week, or even a rough couple of months. Where do we turn for a little peace? Can Jesus still speak his peace into the turmoil of people's hearts and minds today? You better believe it. Jesus still says to us, peace be with you. He can say that every day. If you need it every day. He brings the peace to his disciples. He brings the peace to, to these disciples. And bless their hearts. They think he's a ghost. <laughs> uh, the whole group was startled and frightened. And, and they, they thought they saw a ghost. <laughs> okay, well that's, that's not real impressive. But, you know, on the faith meter. But <laughs> uh, we understand. We get it. It is a very unusual occurrence. Okay. Uh, verse 37, but the whole group was startled. They were frightened. They were thinking they were seeing a ghost. <clears throat> Jesus says, why are you frightened? Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost. Because ghosts don't have bodies, as you see that I do. <laughs> uh, Jesus is so practical with us. I love it. As he spoke, he showed him his hands and his feet. You know, it's very interesting to me. I have always thought, um, since becoming a pastor and studying the scriptures, I've always thought that when we are resurrected, that we will be restored. I mean, I, and I still believe this. I don't think that if, if I died and I had Alzheimer's, I think that's fixed, you know, when I go to heaven. I don't have Alzheimer's. Um, my grandmother, I grew up with a grandmother that um, I never saw her with her right arm because she lost it. When my mom was a kid, she was just she, uh, my, my one armed grandmother. We just thought it was normal. She could swat us just as easily with that left hand, you know. Um, but I bet my grandmother today has, has two arms in her resurrected body. And I've just always thought that. And I still believe that, that we are restored in our resurrected bodies. But Jesus is still carry, Jesus' resurrected body still carries what? The scars. That's fascinating to me. Um, that's just fascinating to me. I, I mean, if that's the way God chooses to do it and I carry my, my knee replacement scars to heaven with me, I'll be fine with it. But I just, in my own mind, I imagine that the scars are gone. You know, we're restored. We're resurrected to our prime. Maybe I'm wrong. But I know that Jesus still bears the scars for what he did for us. So when you and I see Jesus, I, I guess he's going to have nail prints in his hands and, and pierce marks in his feet. And maybe he's going to have that hole in his side where, you know, he's inviting Thomas to touch it there. If that's what you need to believe, go ahead. I'm not a ghost. Jesus is trying to break through their disbelief and shock. I mean, this is huge, right? But they're looking at him like he's a ghost. And he says, I'm not a ghost. Ghosts don't have bodies. I do. Touch me. Check it out. Jesus has to find a way to demonstrate to him that he is truly a physical, resurrected reality. So he takes a different tact. Still, they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. And then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? <laughs> <clears throat> they gave him a, a piece of broiled fish, and he ate that while they watched. What's he doing? Well, ghosts don't eat, right? 
So they're watching him eat the fish, and it's like, he's real. I mean, this is, this is Jesus, you know? They're amazed. As Jesus eats in their presence, it finally dawns on them that this is really happening, and, and Jesus is really back. He's with us. And then he takes them back to school, right? He said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. We had this discussion earlier. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Have you ever read a part of scripture and you just didn't get it? Um, I was actually reading one this morning and I had to look at the footnotes because I just didn't get it. Um, I was reading uh, Galatians, I think it was chapter 3. You just read it sometimes and you don't get it, okay? It just isn't immediately apparent to you. Well, we can understand that that happened with the disciples. Jesus told them some stuff and this is going to happen and they're just not getting it immediately. So he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. What is going to be proclaimed? There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent in Jesus' name, right? You are witnesses of all these things. Indeed, yes, the disciples are witnesses of all these things. We'll come back to that in just a minute. But I love the way Jesus patiently walked them through the scriptures and he helped them see that Uh, how those scriptures related to the events that had just occurred. And and even though the disciples didn't understand it at the time, they're kind of connecting the dots now with Jesus tutoring them. And so he leads the disciples in Bible study, explaining to them what they could not get on their own. I love that about Jesus. He still does that, doesn't he? He meets his disciples in Bible study, and he helps them understand what they can't get on their own. You see where I'm going, right? Bible study is still good. The Spirit of Jesus meets us in that, and we learn things. We connect dots, and we begin to grow in our discipleship and how we follow Jesus and how we share Jesus. We get better at it. Because Jesus himself trains us when we study the scriptures. Jesus still does this kind of stuff today. I love it. Jesus meets us when we're stuck and he helps us get it. So what do we notice in these two appearances, the Emmaus disciples and his other disciples? We notice in both stories there's an initial failure to recognize, right? Um, We notice that. We notice that the resurrected Jesus is as patient with his friends as he was before he died. Okay? He was always patient with them. Even as the resurrected Lord, um, he's still patient with them. Jesus is wonderfully understanding of us in our human frailties, weaknesses, and blindness. He's still very patient and compassionate with us. Um, We also notice in both accounts that Jesus talks with them about the resurrection. Jesus goes over the scriptures with them again. How do we learn? We learn by repetition, right? And we learn by revelation from the Holy Spirit. That's how we learn, okay? It's how we learn the things of God. And so Jesus goes over it with them again. He interprets the scriptures for them. He wants them to understand those Old Testament prophecies in the light of his resurrection. Both stories also have a meal, right? In the first one, they're breaking bread, and Jesus is revealed. In the second one, um, Jesus is eating fish, and they finally get it. Sharing meals is important. It's it's intimate, isn't it? You don't invite your enemies over for, for dinner. You invite your friends. You invite your family. There's a deep bond when we share a meal together. And then in both stories, Jesus departs quickly, (laughs) right? Okay, good. You got it. Bye. (laughs) Places to go, people to see, you know. But but this time, um, Jesus does depart quickly, but not before a promise 
and a command. Remember that Jesus has a job for these witnesses, right? The gospel must be preached. The good news has to be shared. Jesus tells them that it's not enough for them to have seen and experienced his presence among them themselves, just, you know, to keep that joy and that experience to themselves. It's not enough. You have to share it. You have to preach and teach to the world what you have seen and experienced. You have to be a witness. Um, Last verse. And now I will send the Holy Spirit. This is the promise, just as my Father promised. I will send you the Holy Spirit, okay? And this is the command. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. So what is the Holy Spirit going to do for the disciples? It's going to give them what? Power. It's going to fill them with power so that they can be his witnesses. Now, what happens for us when we profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and we're baptized in his name? What happens to us? The Holy Spirit comes. Does it come without power? No. The Holy Spirit comes and fills us with power. So what we want to see is that the same way that Jesus did it in the New Testament times is the same way that Jesus does it in our time and in the time to come and in the past. It's, it's the way of God, okay? When disciples profess Jesus Christ and they are baptized in his name, they receive the power of the Holy Spirit. We say this just about every week in our benediction, right? We're going to go out into the world and we're fueled by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's a real thing friends. It's a real thing. It's amazing. It's, it's part of God's gift to us. So Jesus says and, and wants them to understand that this, this is part of God's plan from the beginning, that the Messiah would suffer, die, and rise from the dead on the third day. It's also part of God's plan that the good news about this Messiah is going to be proclaimed to all the world beginning in Jerusalem. It's also part of God's plan from the beginning that there would be forgiveness of sins in the name and the power and the authority of Jesus for all who repent. It's part of the plan. It was also part of God's plan from the beginning to send the Holy Spirit, to have the disciples be witnesses for Jesus. All part of God's plan from the very beginning. How extraordinary. Amen? How extraordinary. And now it's our turn to be the witnesses. See? The resurrection is a public truth. It is a wonder to be shared. One might argue that the main job of a Christian today is to witness to others about what we have seen and heard and experienced through Jesus Christ. And we have available to us that same Holy Spirit that gives us confidence, that gives us courage, mercy. Friends, the the Holy Spirit sometimes even gives us words, you know, and just kind of puts them in our mouth. And we, we share that when we're being obedient to Jesus. In a very real way, this post-Easter episode is kind of a, a vignette of what happens here on most Sundays, right? We, we open up the scriptures. The risen Christ comes among us in the power of the Holy Spirit. He explains things to us that we didn't get before, that we couldn't figure out on our own. And as wonderful a thing as that is, Jesus still won't leave things at us just passively receiving the blessing. Okay, you're done. Go home. Be good. That's not enough, okay? He commissions us then to go out and tell everyone what we've seen and heard and experienced. What we have received from him here must be shared out there. You and I must be witnesses of the Easter good news. Now again, I know being a witness for Jesus can be a nervous experience. Sometimes we're in unfamiliar territory. We we feel nervous. We're not sure we'll say it right. We're not sure how the words will be received or what the reaction will be. And and I know some of you are thinking, yeah, pastor, that's easy for you, but but I'm shy, you know, or I'm not really comfortable speaking in front of people or, or with a public sharing of faith. Guess what? Jesus doesn't care (laughs) about your comfort level is what I'm talking about okay he doesn't care about your comfort level all who sign on with Jesus are called to be witnesses 
we are commissioned to speak the good news to others. I am very sorry if that was not made clear at your baptism, okay? But, but that's the jig, okay? That's the gig. Besides, you, you'll get better as you practice, okay? Now, get out there and be a good witness for Jesus Christ, all right? Or as Peter put it, in second, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, jot this down. You should read this verse. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Always be ready to give an accounting for the hope that is within you. Translation, always be ready to speak up for Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn is a, a, a commissioning hymn, okay? We'll anoint you with the power of the Holy Spirit and send you out there as we sing, Here I Am, Lord, on 593 or on the screens. <laughs> I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my love. Just hesitate. That's all right. That's human. 
but, but, but ask the question, is it I, Lord? And he will answer, it is you. <laughs> okay? You are the one he wants. Would you join me in the benediction and claim this power of the Holy Spirit that he offers us? Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people because all people are God's people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is a power you have. Go and preach it.